Hello, everybody. Dr. F. Scott Field here, and I'd like to introduce you to our newest sponsor. The NPTE Final Frontier is the review course that I wish was around when I took the board exam. For those of you who know my story, it took me a handful of times to pass that exam, and quite frankly, I really wish I had an, a, an exam review course around, uh, just like the NPTE Final Frontier. Uh, check out their website, npteff.com, and use the code HET at checkout for 10% off to all of our listeners and fans. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Healthcare Education Transformation Podcast. I am your host, Dr. Dawn Brown, and I am bringing you another Teach Me Something Tuesday. Today, we are going to talk about Centering Diversity, Equity, Inclusion, and Belonging, or DEIB, into your curriculum. Most of the content is for professors or for faculty members. However, students should listen because they could benefit from the content as well. When we professors prepare our courses for the start of an academic year or a new semester or a trimester, we generally follow several steps. We may review our course evaluations from the last time that we taught the course to determine what was effective and what was not effective. We may look for current editions of the textbooks that we previously used, or even look for new textbooks that will set the foundation for the course content. And then we may review old PowerPoints and determine what information in those PowerPoints needs to be added, removed, or updated. And then we plan activities that will engage our students as they strive to master the course content. These sound familiar? Well, while these steps are good and may lead to good student outcomes, something is missing. And often what's missing in many physical therapy programs as they prepare courses for the upcoming semester or academic year is a keen attentiveness to prioritizing and centering diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging into our curriculum so that it, it is reflected in our courses. Students and faculty need to be aware that centering DEIB in the curriculum will not only enrich the total faculty and student experiences, but will help to produce physical therapy program graduates who are better prepared to practice effectively in an ever diversifying society. Imagine for a second if faculty taught students through a monolithic lens, if you will, one in which the authors of the textbooks, the images that are used in PowerPoints, and even the case scenarios had people that were all the so same sociocultural identity. How do you think that would impact how students view the patients that they will encounter when they go from the classroom to the clinic? Or how will it impact the type of researcher or the research the students will conduct? Or the impact it will have on their interaction with the peers and professors in the classroom, especially if they don't share the same sociocultural identities? Well, I can assure you that this would have a detrimental effect on student learning and success, both in the classroom and in the clinic, if there is no attentiveness to DEIB. But yet, many physical therapy programs still don't center DEIB into their curriculum. And I question why. When I have conversations with faculty, many say that they don't know how to do it or that they've never really thought about it. And when I have discussions with students, many of the students have told me that when they look back on their courses, they don't really see that diversity is a big priority when their professors are teaching or even in the course content. So let me then offer a few tips on centering diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging into your physical therapy program curriculum. First, start with cultural awareness and then progress to cultural responsiveness, equity-mindedness, and student-centered pedagogical and andragogical approaches. As a faculty member, make sure that you reflect upon your own sociocultural identities, your lived experiences, your perspectives, and yes, your biases that inform how you teach your courses. Use your cultural knowledge as a scaffold to connect what students know to the new concepts that you will teach them. Recognize equity gaps among the students and determine the actions needed to close these gaps. 
We all know students who may need accommodations for their learning needs, but what are we doing about these? And then keep your teaching student-centered by knowing your students' learning needs, their interest in the course content, their aspirations, and their cultural backgrounds that reflect how they will engage with the course content. And then take a look at the curricular threads. Every program has curricular threads. The curricular threads might be evidence-based practice. It might be the human movement system. It might be professionalism. It might be critical thinking. Look at those curricular threads and determine how DEIB is embedded in each of them. For instance, take clinical decision-making. Are the cases that are used in the courses have patients who have an identity, an age, a gender, a race, a religion? Take evidence-based practice. Are you including research articles that are inclusive of culturally diverse researchers and authors? Nowadays, many journals are, are asking that their authors submit, at the very least, their gender identity and their race. And if you know that, make it explicit and tell your students. Then when you move past the curricular threads, look at the course design and be intentional with it. Your course design is your learning objectives, your syllabus, your assessments. So you need to think about which aspects of the course will promote or address intercultural awareness and responsiveness as it pertains to diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging. Make sure that the syllabus, for instance, is intentional. And it helps you to create a classroom where students feel like they are cared for and valued as learners. Are you using representative articles and textbooks? Are the images in your PowerPoints or other course content reflective of the students in your classroom and the patients they will encounter? When you think about these images, just recognize that visual representation is essential as it's an effective part of storytelling and it allows students to connect with the course material. And when you think about images, look beyond skin color. What about age? What about religion? What about disability? How is that reflected in your images? And then when you move on to course delivery, are you being equitable with grading and feedback? Do you grade anonymously? I use Blackboard in my institution and I blind the students' names so that I'm not biased when I'm giving grades. Do you promote active learning and teamwork so students can engage with students from various social cultural backgrounds in your classroom? I'm a big fan of team-based learning and I use that in all of my courses so that students are able to be a part of a highly effective team that's made up of individuals who may on one end be similar to them, but on the other end, be different because of their sociocultural identities, lived experiences, and perspectives. So I challenge you for the upcoming semester or trimester, or even the next academic year, to take a closer look at your curriculum and your associated courses. During your course prep, continuously ask yourself if diversity is reflected in your courses through representation of multiple cultures and exclusion of biased or deficit-minded language. Is equity a priority as you consider the cost of textbooks or student accommodations? Is inclusion apparent through an attentiveness to the whole student as evident by your syllabus content and the class discussion? And finally, have you shifted to creating a culture of belonging by allowing students to bring their true authentic selves to the classroom and speak freely about how their lived experiences and perspectives shape how they engage with the course content? I hope that this information on centering diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging into your curriculum was helpful. And we will see you on the next Teach Me Something Tuesday.